Okay, time to get back into some comparisons. And it's been a while since I've compared condenser microphones, so I'm very excited for this one. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, we're going to be comparing two condenser microphones, specifically two large diaphragm condenser microphones. The new one to my collection is the Lewitt LCT240 Pro, and the one that I've had for a while now, a little over a year, the Audio Technica AT2035. Now, on the internet and on YouTube specifically, these two microphones have been compared a lot. And I feel that's because majorly they're in the same price point. They're basically the same price. But I will say that the Audio Technica AT2035 has an upper hand, depending on how you look at it, because it has switches on the back, a 10 dB pad, and a low cutoff at 80 Hz. The Lewitt does not. I will say that you are able to do all this stuff in post, but some people like to have it on board. The other thing I want to point out, and a good segue into the builds of these things, the accessories that I have along with these two microphones. Uh, with the Lewitt, I bought the Lewitt at a good price, so I bought the accessories separate, but I think you could get a bundle with all this stuff. I have the pop screen and the shock mount that are made for this model. I don't know about any other models of Lewitt, but I know that they're made for this model. And I really like them. They're really well made. The magnetized... Uh, pop screen is nice touch. I really like that. With the Audio Technica AT2035, this is the shock mount for all the 20 series microphones. 2020, 2035, 2050, and 2040. All of them work with this shock mount. The pop screen is just a generic one I've had for a while that I got on Amazon. That's the place. So they're pretty equal with comparing them accessory wise and everything. I try to keep it all pretty similar and with the levels as well I try to keep things as equal as I can now with their builds the only thing that I will say that really is different is the grills and I kind of like the Lewitt a little bit better because of the dual layer one is finer on the inside and one is more coarse or wide open the holes are more wide open than the one on the inside but we'll get into the plosives in the boot and see if those uh, dual layer or even triple layer with this pop screen or any other pop screen that I use. Uh, see if that makes a difference in the quality of rejection of plosives. So overall with the builds, I really like them. They're really robust and really well made and you can feel it. You can feel a well made piece of equipment when you touch it. So next up, I'm going to get into some techie talk. I'm going to talk about the tech, the specs and everything that go into them electronically and the innards. And I will leave up a graphic of all like the tech and specs. And then I'm going to talk about certain ones that stand out for me. And then finally, we'll get into the frequency response curves afterwards. So when you look at the tech and the specs, they're pretty similar in, in style and everything like that. The two things that do stand out are the sensitivity and the ohms. The ohms on the 2035 are 20 ohms more, which... If you really think about it, 100 to 120, not that big of a difference, and you're probably not going to notice it. The regular person is not going to notice this. Now, the sensitivity, you might notice it a little bit. On the AT2035, you have a negative 33 decibel sensitivity. On the Lewitt, you have a negative 35 and a half. Two and a half decibels definitely reflects in the levels here. I have the Lewitt at 38 decibels of gain, and the AT2035 at 36. So... There's your two decibels or so of gain difference. And they're bouncing around the same level, give or take. But I try my best to do it as best as close as I can with the level peaking around the same level. Of course, you can nitpick if you want, but I try my best to get it right around the same level. And I also mess with it in post as well to get it all some neutral level so it's not peaking. So it's a nice, healthy level for all of you to listen to. Now, other than those two things, they're pretty much the same microphone. And I will say, like I said in the build, the Audio-Technica AT2035 has a switch for 80 hertz of a roll-off on the low end and a negative dB pad for 10 decibels. So it, that really is a personal thing. It's not necessarily a selling factor. I mean, it does get into 
reasons why people buy microphones. But in my opinion, I feel like it's only a personal thing for uh, someone if they want to get a microphone with it or without. Uh, it's not a necessity because you could do a lot of this stuff in post, but it is nice to have if you have it. Now, lastly, in Techie Talk, let's get into the most important thing about a microphone how it's tuned in the frequency response curve. All right, so future Justin here. It's been a whirlwind of crazy stuff going on. Wrong frequency response curves. Lewitt doesn't know what the hell's going on, but to be honest, I'm just trying to get the information out to you that is correct. And at the time, I thought it was because I have the spec sheet that I downloaded back in April that was supposedly the right one but apparently it was the wrong frequency response curve thank you to everyone who has pointed it out i do appreciate that and now that i have the right one let's get the frequency response curve compared with these two it's going to be quick it's not going to be too crazy and i will go back to past or yeah past justin to finish off the video just like it was and if you're new here that's what it was and you might think i'm a rambling crazy person in the future and bright-eyed and bushy-tailed in the past, but that's the way it is. Let's go to it. So moving on to the LCT240 Pro's frequency response curve, the correct one, apparently, now. They might change it. I don't know. Could happen. We have a natural low cutoff, which dips right below negative 5 decibels, right at 20 hertz. And it goes starting around like 200 down at a 45 degree angle, natural low cutoff is what I say. Now, of course, this doesn't take away all those frequencies. It's just a slight dip. Now, if you want a more harsh shelf, like a low cutoff shelf, you could always add that later. There is no switches on the LCT240 Pro. So keep that in mind. It's something that you could add on later. But if you like this, it's nice. And those frequencies are not necessarily in use most of the time. But if they are, they're not too dampened. Just keep that in mind. They're always there. You can always bring them back. They're always there. Uh, but chances are you're not going to need them. Now, moving on to the 2035. This has a switch, which is a low cutoff. And naturally, it's a little more flat. Very reminiscent of the 2020. If you saw the 2020 comparison, let me know. And we could talk about that one as well. The 2035, on the other hand, is more flat and down at around 80 again same kind of uh, tuning it has there but not as aggressive i don't think i think it's a little more boosted just slightly than the 2020 but with this it's more flat it doesn't have a low cutoff because it has the 80 hertz low cutoff on the 2035 so you see there it has a dip there and a very pretty drastic low cutoff it's not a harsh shelf where it goes straight to like infinite zero but it's definitely a harsh dip down there and those probably cross over with each other around 100 maybe 150 or so when they that low end there natural and the low cutoff so keep that in mind when you're thinking of where it's going to alter your tone now sticking with the AT2035, we're in the midsection now. And the midsection is fairly flat, a little bumpy here and there, but for the most part from about 150 to about, uh, I'd say about one, almost 2K actually. It's pretty flat. You got a boost there after 1K, but nothing crazy, nothing too uh, aggressive. Back on the LCT240 Pro in the midsection, it's pretty flat from 200 to about 1K, maybe 1,200 or so, and a little bumpy here and there, but for the most part, it's pretty flat. Now, these are good for spoken word. It's nice. You can cut out those mids if it's too muddy for you, or maybe increase them if that's something you're looking for. If it's a different application, if it's a acoustic guitar or whatever it is, you might need some of those mids to be boosted or taken away. So a nice flat midsection is good for spoken word for the most part, and you could alter it however you want if another application is being put out there. Sticking with the LCT240 Pro, let's go to the mid highs and high, high highs, you know, those sparkly things that we talk about all the time so after 1k starts to rise up to a plateau and plateaus around 2k maybe a little before and then gives you a little bit of a presence boost around three no 4k 
This presence boost is nice because it's subtle, but not too aggressive. Now, depending on the person, depending on the tone that you're putting into it, will determine if it's needing more or if it's just right. Kind of like Goldilocks in the porridge. Opposite of the porridge and the high end and the hot porridge. I don't know why this analogy is continuing, but that's the way it is. At about 8K, this is where it differs from what it was before because it was the 440 pure frequency response that they threw in the manual for some odd reason don't know why but now this is what it is it has a boost right around seven decibels in 8k and this might be a little aggressive to certain people it might be a little aggressive uh to anyone who's got a more trebly and higher tone in their voice uh but also it could play to their strengths it could also help you it depending on the person depending on how you like the way it sounds will determine if you're going to cut it or keep it that should be a uh, a series i should do cut it or keep it in certain microphones maybe i'll do that if you're interested in something like that let's talk about it so that was the major difference in the difference between the 440 pure and the 240 pro uh then you got a dip around 12k or so and then the boost at around 15k it's a little bit more than it was in the previous frequency response but if you're new to this you don't know the old one but look at the 440 pure and that is what i thought was the right one which it isn't and uh podcastage was another one that was bamboozled by the lewitt microphone spec sheet so i'm not the only one in this we've all been bamboozled and thankfully the community was pretty nice for the most part and uh, letting me know that it was wrong and uh, Lewitt needs some explaining to do. Just because they should explain it. You see around 1K, got a little bit of boost there. Then a 2K, a little bit of boost again, but nothing too crazy. It probably is about like a 2 decibel or so, maybe 3 in some sections boost. And wavy little valleys, peaks in there. And then it dips back down around like 7.5 or so. Okay, and then rises back up more presence boost around 14k and yeah that's pretty much it with the at2035 and i do prefer the at2035 frequency response but depending on the application it might be more applicable for lack of better terms no pun intended or is that a pun i don't know it might be a pun it's hot it's i'm sweating and i need to get these comparisons or this frequency response right and uh out to you so now back to previous me like past me just the bright eyed and bushy tailed me uh thinking that this was going to be a good idea uh going covering microphones that i haven't covered before and apparently it went uh for lack of better terms no i'm not gonna go there past me he'll take care of it now we're gonna do a noise test and a off-ax rejection test in the studio here mildly treated sound blankets all around so got a lot of stuff to avoid reflection but there is some noise going around so keep that in mind i'm going to boost a little bit in post and i'll let you know in the corner okay so like I said, a little bit of fan going on. There might be someone walking upstairs that might have been picked up, but uh, keep that in mind if you have a room similar to this or if you have people around or a fan going on in the other room. These are all things that you got to consider. All right, I've been talking about like two, three inches away from the fronts of the microphones. Now I'm about two feet away from the fronts of the microphones. This way it's going to sound like with the distance test between the LCT240 by Lewitt. I keep forgetting that. Pro, by the way. And the AT2035. Not as fancy, but it has more switches. So that's what it's going to be with the distance test. And now we're going to do the 90s and 180 degree test. All right. Now about like a foot and a half, two feet away from the Lewitt on stage left. This is going to be the off-axis rejection on the Lewitt side. And uh, yeah, I'm running out of things to say. So I'm excited for this comparison because these two are very, very close in quality and very close in uh, the way that they are. All right, about two, three feet away from the rears of the microphones, 180 degree test on the Lewitt and the Audio Technica 2035 and the 240. So many model numbers, so little time. And this is what it's going to sound like in the mildly treated room 
bunch of sound blankets. I feel like I'm in an insane asylum with all the padded surfaces. Maybe I do deserve to be in here. I don't know. Let me know what you think about the 180 degree test. All right, so we're going to go to the booth right now and give a live listen. And then, of course, I will let you know in the outro after I've listened to it in post uh, how I feel about them. Because it's two totally different worlds of listening to it in post and live. So let's get into it. All right, so we're in the booth right now. Louie and Audio Technica. I like calling him Louie because my sister called him Louie. Um, so yeah, uh, LCT 240 Pro and the AT2035. And make sure that the switches are off. Because we're going to test those later. I always forget to do that when I test things. But I checked it right now. We're all good. So we're on the Lewitt right now. I'm listening to it. And I definitely noticed that it's got a, like a like a tinny kind of sound, like a metal-y kind of sound to it. Let's take the pop screen off and see if we make a difference with that. And, nah, it's still there. This here doesn't make much of a difference when it comes to tone. It's actually pretty neutral and doesn't affect it too much. You put it back on, and it avoids plosives. Like, I just had a P and B and stuff like that. And we'll do a plosive test in a little bit. I just want to get a lay of the land with how they sound. So moving on to the AT2035. We're on the AT2035 now. And you notice that it has a lower end sound. So the low end is more emphasized. And the high end is not as uh, textured. Maybe it's a little more neutral. And, of course, I have kind of a nasally kind of voice and allergies and all stuff fun stuff like that so that may affect how I hear it and maybe how I sound so let me know down in the comments if you with normal ears and normal noses uh, hear it any different than I do and I'll let you know how I feel in post after I've edited uh, everything I edit everything up until the outro and get it ready to go and then I film the outro after because uh, it gives me an, a better understanding of how these microphones sound and a lot of repetition and it really gives me a good idea of how I feel and gives me a better understanding of which one I prefer. It's not necessarily a winner. I mean, technically they won in my comparison, but it's, everyone has their own opinion, so it's just mine. So uh, let's do a plosive test and I have a lot of configurations to go through, so let's get through them. All right, Louie. Nude Louie. Oof, I don't want to go any further. With the pop screen. Not terrible, it's pretty good. With the SE Electronics. This thing is awesome. Pop screen and SE Electronics. Provided windscreen. It's alright. If you have good microphone technique and this stuff, you can definitely make it sound good. And also, you hear the tone difference. Uh, let's do this. Okay, covered all our bases there. AT2035. Mm. The Amazon one. Not bad. S Electronics and both. Nice. All right, so now we're going to do a tone test and see how these things sound with all those different configurations. So let's go back to the Lewitt, and you, this is what I was having before as my configuration. And if you take off the pop screen, you notice that it's not that big of a difference with tone and stuff like that. So it's pretty neutral. Now let's put on the windscreen. All right, so the windscreen's on, and you notice that that high end is getting dampened. It's like a mute. It's filtering it. It's very much so like a filter. And I don't know. I feel like it's taking away from too much detail now that I'm listening to it. I, I hear it differently every time, and maybe that's because of my ears popping and stuff like that from the allergies. But uh, let me know down in the comments uh, what you think, and I will definitely let you know uh, in post how I feel. So yeah, this is how it sounds with the windscreen. Let's go back to the pop filter. 
And yeah, you notice that that detail is back in that high end there. So next up, we're going to do the AT2035 and see how it sounds or listen to how it sounds. Yeah, I, I, I really like that sound. And now one more test in here before we finish up. We have a switch on the AT2035 and I will be doing a test with post-processing and with uh, in the Zoom F6 uh, low cutoff at 80 hertz to match the 2035. But since we're on the AT2035, low cut is yeah, low cut off is on that's a tongue twister and you it's not aggressive it's not super aggressive but it's noticeable that that low end is being cut at 80 hertz so keep that in mind when you're using this microphone that if you're trying to emphasize more high end and more mids and stuff like that this would definitely come in handy you could of course do it in post and you could do it in your a lot of recorders as well speaking of that let's put a low cutoff on the Lewitt. Okay, this is a palate cleanser. This is the Lewitt Natural and the way that it's supposed to sound out of the box. And now we have the digital low cutoff on the Zoom F6 putting, uh, taking away, I should say, 80 hertz low cutoff. And you notice that it's not crazy. I actually, I'm kind of liking it right now. It's not bad, uh, maybe a little airy. Like that kind of sound. It emphasizes a little bit more. So keep that in mind. And now we're going to take away the 80 hertz low cutoff on the Zoom S6 and do a post-processing one. Of course, I can't hear it, but you guys let me know what you think and I'll let you know in the post outro, that thing, you know, that end part. Okay, so I'm listening to it naturally. You guys are listening to it with a post-processing uh, low cutoff. So keep that in mind. And you probably noticed that it's missing and I tried to get it as close as I can to the 2035's low cutoff but there's only so much I can do with that so let me know what you think I'm switching back and forth this still has the low cutoff switch on so I'm switching back and forth between the two and this is a good example of what you would encounter with a digital a onboard recorder one and just how it is with low cutoffs and which one you prefer I have a video out comparing uh, low cutoffs with the recorder, post-processing, and switches. So go check that out if you're interested in something like that. So let's give these a natural tone and move on to the untreated room. All right, so untreated room time, 2035, and the LCT240 by Lewitt. And we are going to be doing it in my actual bedroom. Uh, it's a different size room. If you've seen the other comparisons, uh, if you're watching this later, this is the first comparison I'm putting out. But if you watch other ones and the Lewitt review, I'm doing all the untreated room stuff in my room now. It's a different size room, so I want to give some variety for this uh, part of the comparison. So 8 foot by 15 feet, roughly, give or take. Um, there are more reflexive surfaces in this room. Uh, the only soft surfaces is really my bed and this area rug underneath me that covers about a quarter of a wood floor. So keep that in mind. There's also, also a window here. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, now we're going to be doing a distance test, 90 degree test and 180 degree test. So I've been talking about like two to four inches away from the fronts of the microphones. And now we're going to back up a bit. All right, about like two-ish, maybe three feet away from the fronts of the microphones, and this is going to be your distance test in the untreated room. Like I said, not a lot of soft surfaces in this room, but they, um, the area rug underneath me will help, and maybe the bed might help, but uh, other than that, I think you're going to hear more reflection in this room rather than the other room, and I think uh, it's a good kind of yin and yang kind of thing going on because uh the studio is now more treated than it ever has been and this room is less treated than the untreated room that i have had in the past so keep that in mind and this probably is more relatable to a lot of people as well all right 90 degree test about two three feet away from the lewitt on stage left and stage right has a window so there could be a little bit of reflection back to the microphones but let me know down in the comments what you think about the off-axis rejection. And like I said, it's 
probably not crazy amounts of reflection, but there probably is more so than the other untreated room, quote unquote, because technically it's untreated, but it's stuff is treatment. So I guess that's another t-shirt. That should be a t-shirt. Stuff is treatment. All right. 180 degree test. AT2035 Lewitt LCT 240 Pro. Almost forgot it. Uh, this is your off axis rejection, 180 degrees, two to three feet away from the rears of the microphones. Possibly some reflection off the ceiling and the window adjacent to me. And uh, let me know what you think down in the comments about the reflections, about the rejection. Is there some? Is there less? If you've been here a while and you've done and you've listened to the untreated room stuff, let me know if it's any different. If you like this room better for the untreated room tests, let me know down in the comments. All I ask to be nice. All right, let's go down to the studio and I'll give you my uh, post processing impressions and like my post listening, I should say, impressions because it just makes more sense to give you both impressions of live listening and post listening. Uh, if you feel different, then let me know down in the comments and we can talk about it. Discussions, not arguments. Let's get going. All right, so that is the Lewitt LCT 240 Pro versus the Audio-Technica AT2035. And as you can see here, I have the Audio-Technica AT2035 as my choice between these two. And it was a tough decision because I really do feel like these microphones are very close in quality, price, and well, I mean, of course, they're close in price, but I feel like they're very close in a lot of categories, which I'll get into specifics in just a sec. But but when it came down to it, I, I really just overall like the tone of the AT2035 and the Lewitt. It was nice, but it wasn't my style. So a couple of notes that I have here that really stood out while listening to this whole thing. The Lewitt was a bit sibilant and the AT2035 can get a hint of it, but I think the way that they adjusted the high end on the Lewitt kind of emphasizes some of those S's a little bit more. And if you listen back to it, you could kind of hear it in the studio part of it where I was using a little bit more S's for some reason. Then with the AT2035, I noticed that the low end is a little bit more present here and i like that that's my personal preference in a microphone i like that low end presence because that high end is always given some presence boosts in all microphones every microphone has those adjustments in the high end but that low end naturally is hard to get and that's why i like this one that's why i like the 4040 the sure sm7b I, all these microphones that have a low end presence i love it um some other ones that come to mind are the um octava and the Sennheiser MKH416, they have some low presence there. I like I like a low presence, a little little more bassy in my uh, recordings, but that's just me personally. Everyone else has their personal preference. Some people like a brighter microphone, some people like a darker microphone, whatever it is. So moving on, we got basically they're even when it comes to plosive rejection, noise, meaning the noise test that we did with just natural noise in the microphone with me being quiet and everything around the house going on. The off-axis rejection, pretty much the same. Uh, the one thing I will say with the off-axis rejection, in the untreated room... Now, this doesn't have anything to do with the off-axis rejection, actually. It was just that test. Uh, when I was listening back to talking into the microphone in the untreated room right up against it, the Audio-Technica definitely performed better i heard less of the room on the at2035 but you guys let me know what you think of that comparison and that specific part down in the comments if you have anything to say about that and then the last thing is the frequency response curve the most important thing about a microphone by the way at least in my opinion that I, I mean that could be completely wrong or it's just an opinion that's all so the frequency response curve i definitely feel like it's just a little bit better i just feel like that high end was tuned a little bit better and that a little bit more of a boost in the low end is nice uh of course it also has the low cutoff option which is a nice touch as well so that's all i got for you thank you all for watching hope you all enjoyed it if you like this video please hit the like button down below It'd be greatly appreciated it helps this video helps this channel and all that stuff gets it out to more people and the whole youtube algorithm thing it's a real thing it's true 
And if you like my vibe around here, please consider subscribing. I have a bunch of comparisons coming out with the LCT240 Pro. Uh, maybe in one of those comparisons, I will pick it. Little teaser there, potentially. I'm editing the other stuff right now, so I haven't gotten there yet, but maybe. A definite maybe <laughs> for you. Uh, also, if you have any comments, questions, anything whatsoever, down in the comments section, I just ask that you be nice and don't be a jerk. And if you want to join the Discord, the Discord is available for everyone. If you want to join, rules still apply. Don't be a jerk. Just be nice. And that's it for this one. Until next time, I'll see you rebels in the next video.